Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering 10.4, determining the type of quadrilateral using the coordinate plane. So before we talk about what we, before we talk about uh, how to classify these on a coordinate plane, let's first focus on one additional property to our parallelograms. So we talked before about how things are true because of if and only if statements. For example, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Well, we have one more property that helps us identify a parallelogram. And that is if one pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay? So this is going to help us with on a coordinate grid. So let's talk about Again, properties that we use to classify. So this is how we can identify whether or not a quadrilateral is these different shapes. So a parallelogram has two pairs of con congruent opposite sides. Okay, it has two pairs of parallel sides, it has bisecting diagonals, okay, we had consecutive interior angle supplementary. Okay, and our last one, which is one pair of opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Oops, and we'll just use the symbol for that. It looks like an 11, parallel, okay? So we have these five things can help us classify a parallelogram as being, or classify a quadrilateral as a parallelogram. I want to highlight a handful of these. We have here, 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 and here. These four, what are special about these that I can use is, I can actually use these on a coordinate grid using just distance formula or midpoint formula. Okay, Consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, very difficult to show on a coordinate grid. So we're going to focus on these four for today. Okay, uh, let's look at a rhombus. Rhombus had some special things to it. It had, uh, it's a parallelogram that has congruent, so all like four congruent sides. It has perpendicular diagonals. And it had diagonals that bisect opposite angles. Shows up. There we go. Diagonals bisect opposite angles. And again, let's think about which ones could I show on a coordinate grid. I've got these two. Bisecting opposite angles, again, that's going to be very difficult on a coordinate grid. Okay, rectangles. These were parallelograms that had four congruent angles. They also have congruent diagonals. Okay? And both of these, we can actually use both options on a coordinate grid. So that will work for both of those cases. Square, okay, so square is a combination of everything that is, since it's a rectangle and a rhombus together then all those properties that we can use for a rectangle and rhombus, we can use on a square. Now here's the thing, if we are classifying a square, it needs one property. We have to show one property of a rectangle. I hope I can spell. One property of a rectangle and one property of a rhombus. 
So if I want to classify something as a square, I need to have one of each for this to work out. Okay? Trapezoid, like from yesterday, it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay? And that is, again, that's something we can show on a coordinate grid. How do we show parallel on a coordinate grid? So that's just when slopes are the, exactly the same as each other. Okay? Well, and the last thing is a kite. So a kite has a couple of options. There was, it has two pairs of congruent sides, but not opposite sides. Okay, so that was two pairs of congruent sides that are, but not the opposite sides. Um, it also has perpendicular diagonals. Okay, and the last thing was it has opposite, it has one pair of congruent opposite angles. And again, think about what I can potentially do on a coordinate grid. I can talk about things having congruent sides and I can talk about having perpendicular diagonals. Those are very easy. Remember, trapezoid and kites, these are non-parallelograms. So these are gonna be different from our other shapes because when we start looking at our classification, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is, I wanna see, is it a parallelogram? If I could show that's a parallelogram, then I'm going to take it a step further and say, is it a rhombus rectangular square? If it's not a parallelogram, can I see if it's a trapezoid or kite? If I cannot show any of these options on this page, then it's just a quadrilateral. That's as best as we can get. So let's take a look at this example. We have a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. We have negative 4, positive 1 for A. B is at a negative 2, positive 4. C is at a 4, 0, and D is at 2, negative 3. So there's my quadrilateral. Okay? So my initial feeling might be that it's a rectangle. It kind of looks like it. However, I need more information. So here's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with parallelogram. Okay? And I think the easiest way to do that is to analyze the four slopes that we have. You, even though I'm doing this on a coordinate grid, you don't have to because you could just look at stuff like this. If I want to find the slope of A to B, okay, that's how I'm going to use that here. That, that slope is going to be made up of, we got, uh, let's see here, 4 minus 1 over negative 2 minus a negative 4. I should probably bring this up. Let's re quickly remind ourselves, how do we find slope? Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So that's what I'm using here to find these. So the slope of, from a to b is going to be 4 minus 1, negative 2 minus a negative 4. So I get 3 over, these will turn into addition, 3 over 2, okay? I'm going to look opposite that side. Let's look at cd. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to take negative 3 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 4. And that's a negative 3 over negative 2, which is a positive 3 over 2. Okay, so I have enough information to say that these are parallel to each other. Okay, the next step is, let's do BC. So the slope of B to C. So that's going to be 0 minus 4 divided by 4 minus a negative 2. Okay, so 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. 4 plus 2 is going to give me 6. If I reduce that, that is a negative 2 thirds. And my final slope, I'm going to look at AD. Okay, so that is going to be negative 3 minus 1 over, let's see here, negative 3 minus a 1, 2 minus a negative 4. So that gives me a negative 4, and once again, this will turn into addition. So that's negative 4 over 6, which is the same as negative 2 thirds. Here's what I've shown. These two are parallel. 
These two are parallel. Okay? Therefore, I know I have a parallelogram. So now I'm going to think about my hierarchy. Can I go further? Can I say it's a rectangle? Okay? Well, if I have four congruent angles in a rectangle, that means that all four angles are right angles. Here's what I need to remember. If a, if a slope, for example, is 3 over 2 here, the perpendicular slope is a negative 2 thirds. Okay, it's opposite reciprocals of each other. So what I have, I do have parallel lines, and I have perpendicular slopes at the corners. Therefore, my classification is a rectangle. Now, visually, I can see this. I, if I know it's a rectangle, I should check, is it also a square? But when I look at this, I can see it's not. Because if I look here, I got one, two, one, two, three. Okay? If I do Pythagorean theorem, I'm gonna, I could find the length of this side. If I go here, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So when I look at just these two, I know I don't have a rhombus because sides are not congruent. Uh, two pairs of sides are are. I'm not going to have four congruent sides to each other, okay? So remember, this is as specific as I can get as a rectangle because first I showed it is a parallelogram, and then I showed perpendicular slopes, okay? All of the properties that were on the previous page, that's what you're looking at in terms of a, on a coordinate grid. So let's just go ahead and do the next one together as well. So I have four, seven for A. B is at 9, 7. Okay, C is at 6, 3. And D is at 1, 3. So initial guess to me says that it looks like a parallelogram. But let's just double check. So I'm first going to check parallelogram. So if I look at A to B, well, A to B is a horizontal line. So that slope is just going to be zero. But if I do my slope formula, I could do this. I'll just go ahead and do that for the sake of it. I've got 7 minus 7 over 9 minus 4. So that's 0 over 5, which is 0. If I look at the slope of C to D, okay, that's going to be 3 minus 3 over 6 minus 1, which is going to give me 0 over 5. And that's also 0. So therefore, I have one pair of parallel sides, okay? Well, actually, thinking about one of our other properties, I don't have to find the other pair of parallel sides yet. Instead, I can just count these out. I got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So the length of AB is five, and the length of CD is also five. This actually applies the property of one pair of congruent and parallel sides. Okay, so since I have one pair of sides to do that, it is indeed a parallelogram. Since it's a parallelogram, I should probably double check is a rectangle or rhombus. Visually, I could see it's not going to be a rectangle. Okay, if I have a slope of zero, I would need vertical lines to make right angles. But let's take a look at the rhombus idea. So if I look at B to C, I got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the length of BC is going to be BC squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. I'm just applying Pythagorean theorem. You could also do distance formula. Don't forget, distance formula is, um, sorry about that, it's going to be the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so if I did distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, it doesn't matter. So I have BC squared is equal to 9 plus 16. BC squared is equal to 25. Square root that, and BC is 5. Well, I notice BC is now the same as these other two. So let's take a look at AD as well. So AD is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Well, I know, for, I know what's going to happen. If I do my Pythagorean theorem again, AD is also going to come out as 5. So it's a good thing I checked this because what I found out is not only is it a parallelogram, it's also a rhombus. So all of my classifications, again, I want you to focus on what creates certain things. Parallel lines are the same slope. 
perpendicular lines, our perpendicular, our opposite reciprocal slopes. Things that are congruent have to have the same, uh, either through Pythagorean theorem or distance formula. Um, I didn't talk about any bisecting things, but you can do this with the bisecting diagonals. Why don't we do it on this one just for the fun of it? Okay. If I look at B, B, D, and A, C here, I'm going to check the midpoints of both of those. So the midpoint of B, D is going to be, look at the points themselves here, 9 plus 1 divided by 2, and 7 plus 3 divided by 2. So that midpoint is going to be 10 divided by 2 is 5, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Well, let me do double check for AC. What's the midpoint of AC? So that's going to be 4 plus 6 divided by 2, and then 7 plus 3 divided by 2. Well, if I do that, I'm going to get 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then 10 divided by 2 is 5. So here, what I just showed is that those two diagonals are also midpoints of each other, or they share the same midpoint. So it's right here at 5, 5. So since they have the same midpoint, they are bisecting each other. So I've just d demonstrated that as another possibility of showing parallelograms. Well, the other thing is, if it's a rhombus, they should have perpendicular slopes for these two. I could go on and on and on, so I'm going to cut it off there. But I want you to make sure you're looking at all these different possibilities of ways you can show and classify our quadrilaterals on a coordinate grid. So that concludes our 10.4 for classification.